Hello and welcome to another lesson. This lesson is very similar to the last one, but we'll be talking more specifically about forcing the position of notes. As we saw in the last lesson, we can change an object's position to be literally anywhere by using the inspector window, but we can also do a very similar sort of thing for notes, and this can be a lot more useful than you might think. So if I click on a note and open up the inspector window, I can force that note to display left or right of its original position by changing its x-axis. Changing its y-axis, however, will only change the position of the note stem and not the note head itself. So why is this useful? Well, take a look at the sarabande from the second violin partita from Johann Sebastian Bach. For a digital engraver, this is a bit of a nightmare, because you can see that frequently individual notes within chords aren't aligned with the other notes in that same chord. Even the first chord, for example, is notated with each note spatially displaced. But if we can change a note's x-axis, notating this digitally no longer becomes a major problem. So, to recreate that first chord from the sarabund, I'm first, well, going to type up the chord. And you'll see that if I then select a note within that chord and then try to change its x-axis, all of the notes move with it. It applies to the entire chord. So if I want to move each note separately, I have to assign each note a separate voice. In this case, I'm going to need all four, so blue, green, orange, and pink. And then I'm going to change their note stems to all face the same way. And now I can then select each note and offset its x-axis in the inspector window. Now obviously I would then have to hide many of the additional rests, but you can see that by using this technique I could recreate everything that we just saw in the Bach partita. And as always, if you'd like to undo any of these spacing changes, all you have to do is select the passage and press Control shift p to reset their positions. So I really hope that this principle of being able to change an object or note's position in the inspector window sticks in your mind, because knowing that this is available will potentially save you a lot of time if you ever run into a notational situation that requires something very specific like this. So that's it for now, and I'll catch you in the next lesson.